Hello, my name is Sally Pinto, and I'm the program director for the Yonkers Nork Neighborhood Naturally Occurring Retirement Community. We serve seniors 60 plus in Northeast Yonkers. We are under the auspices of WJCS and the Yonkers Office for the Aging. We also have a resource specialist and a nurse on staff. We conduct virtual programming when partnership with the Yonkers Public Library on a daily basis. Enjoy the program. Um, so if you were just hopping in and you didn't hear, or if you're new to this class, um, anything you have around you, so pillows, blankets, a sweatshirt, um, bath towels, anything that you can think of that you could roll up and to use to fill any space um, will mostly be laying down for the majority of class. Um, so if you ever need to take a break being on your back too, know that anything is always available to you. Um, and I always say for our yin yoga class, it's less about alignment and more focus on sensation. So we're thinking more about finding that Goldilocks effect. So we want to be in a shape and we don't want to, if we might feel nothing and that's fine, but we don't want to ever move into a place of pain. So, and I'll continue to remind you of that throughout class. So come onto your back. And you can wiggle around as much or as little as you need to when you come to lay down. And just begin to check in with your body. Just start to notice any ten tightness, any tender spots. Maybe it's the first time you've been still all day. And it's also totally normal for as the weather is cold to always feel just a little tight. For it to take a little bit longer to warm up the body because it's cold outside. And you can begin here in any position you want with the legs and the arms. And just begin to settle in. Okay. Start to feel your breath. And maybe even start to observe anything going on around you. Maybe it's other people in your home, pets, the heat kicking on, or things outside of your home, neighbors, cars. You can't control the things going on around you but you can just invite it into your practice and just allow it to be a part of your practice today. Allow those sounds that we normally think of as distractions 
to just move with us through the practice. Let's find three more rounds of breath here. Inviting a deep inhale in. And exhale it out. No, Kelly, you have to stop. No. Stop right there. One more breath here. And if your feet are long, if your legs are unbent and long out in front of you, just slowly start to bend the knees. So just allowing the feet to rest on the floor. And when you first arrive here, whether you've been here since the beginning or you just arrived here, just start to rock the knees from side to side. So think of them as a windshield wiper. And they're moving really slow. It's just like drizzling outside. It's not a big rainstorm. It's just a little bit of moving. You're even welcome to bring the hips into it a little bit. Just always being mindful of the sensations in your body. And take a couple more of these rocks. And pausing with the knees pointing up to the sky. And begin to hug your right knee into the chest. So you can use your hands, you can use one hand or both hands. Or if it's too far of a reach to reach the top of the knee, you can even hold on to the pants that you have on. So I want you to just have something kind of controlling that knee coming in as opposed to letting it hang. If we don't use our hands, we, it's just, it's a little bit more passive and a bit more engagement in our core. And while that's not a bad thing at all, it's actually really good. I actually want you to um, take this more passive. So I want you to be able to let go a little bit more. And now when you first get here, you can always rock the knee a little bit from side to side. It might not feel like it wants to really come in without giving it a little bit of movement. Always bringing yourself back to your breath. Your breath can be a great indicator of how hard you're working. Now, another great option is if you feel like you're working too hard is to let the foot rest on the left knee. And you can always change how much that knee is bent. So really just focusing on compressing the right hip. So letting it come into this nice flexion point. Just a few more rounds of breath here, because I know that even though we're making this more passive, it can feel like a lot of work. So 
Last breath here. And then gently start to release your right leg and allow the foot to rest on the floor. And then lengthen the right leg along. So you can keep the left leg bent, but just allowing that right leg to come onto the floor. So we were really constricting that hip and now we just wanna release it and let it go. We'll keep the left leg bent because we're not quite ready to release it yet, but we will get there. can again do whatever you'd like with your arms and even whatever you'd like with your head. We'll stay in this position for a little while longer. And you may notice as you continue to show up for class and as we continue to move our body and our yin, that some of the things that we do aren't things that you would think of that are yoga poses, like this one. Just a reminder that we're not so worried about getting our body into funny shapes, but we're really focusing on letting go. Inviting your last round of breath here. And slowly start to place your right foot back on the floor. And you may even observe for a moment if your sides feel different. They might, they might not doesn't mean that you did anything right or wrong. Just means that's how your body's responding today. So let's find that same thing on the second side. So start to bring your left knee in, moving nice and slow. Again, you can hold on with the hands or you can hold on to your pants for your shorts. You can always invite a little movement, just rocking the knee to find that space that you need today. And of course, you always have the option to let the foot rest on the right leg. 
It's okay if the knee turns out a little bit, just trying to keep the knee and toes in the same line. That will just keep your knee safe. Always bringing yourself back to your breath. Last couple of rounds of breath here. And slowly start to release your left foot all the way back onto the floor. And lengthen your left leg on the mat. Releasing now the front of the left hip. Taking a few moments with your breath here. And today we're really focusing on constricting, so closing the angles of our body, like pulling the knee in, and then expanding. So every pose, every time we need it, we're actually gonna counter it right away. So this is countering our knee tucked in. Instead of waiting until the end of class to really come into that nice juicy counter pose. Just one more breath with the leg straight.
and start to bend the knee. You can even allow the heel to just drag on the floor. And this time we'll hug both knees into our chest. So again, you might use your hands. You might hold on to your pants, but you can't put your foot on the other leg. We're not gonna hold as long. So even though you might feel like you're being a little bit more active than you want to, I want you to stick with your breath here. Really try to relax the feet, relax the toes. Just one more breath here. And slowly let the feet release to the floor. And this time we'll lengthen both legs long. So if you do need a little support underneath the knees, just go ahead and slide a pillow or a blanket under there. And we'll even take the arms into a T. Or, or more of a Y, because we were using our hands to hold us with those knees tucked. So let's find a full body expansion. Always coming back to your breath. You might even observe that those noises that you heard at the beginning of our practice today have now just blended into the background. Because I just called them out, you might notice them a little bit more at the moment. But I want you to remember that you were able to blend it into the background before. And you can do it again for the second half of our practice today. There's always going to be new things popping up. New things trying to pull your attention away from where you are. just starting to allow those things to be just a part of the noise while continuing to stay in the present moment.
Inviting two more rounds of breath here. Two inhales and two exhales. And slowly starting to bring your feet onto the floor. Nice and slow. I'm inviting any movement here. It can be rocking the knees. It can be even just a little bit pelvic tilt. So we'll keep our feet on the floor and our next contraction will be crossing the right ankle on top of the left knee. So coming towards a figure four shape. Now let's take just a few moments keeping our left foot on the floor. We're not going to try to hug anything in here. But you can even find a little movement when you first get there. Always coming back to your breath. Now you are more than welcome to stay right here. If this is your Goldilocks spot, if you are totally good here, stay here. If you would like to take it more, if you want to a little hot, a little hotter, you can start to hug your figure four into your chest. So you're gonna, again, use your arms to hug the left knee in. You can, again, hold on to your pants or hold on to the leg. Another fun thing to do is if you just want a little lift, you can always just place your foot on a pillow or a blanket or a little stack of pillows and blankets. And I have a very squishy pillow, but it does bring it up about an inch, which is kind of nice. It just changes the angle of my hip. It's a great option that allows you to release into it more and it helps me find my Goldilocks spot today. And again, you can always keep the foot on the floor. Don't think that just because you try to go more that you have to stay there. If it's too much, back up. Allowing your breath to be intentional, long, and flowing. If at any point it feels more challenging to breathe or to take a full inhale or exhale, maybe you play with where you're at in the shape. You can take it a little step back. The yin is not about working your hardest. It's really about relaxing and releasing 
into the shapes. Find our final two rounds of breath here, wherever here is. Slowly start to release your left foot back to the floor. <laughs> if you have a pillow or a blanket underneath your foot, you can just gently slide it out to the side and uncross your right leg. You'll come into a half butterfly on the right leg. So the knee will just drop out to the side. And again, you can always add that pillow underneath the knee. And then allow the left leg to lengthen on the ground. So coming into a reclined tree. It's okay if your hips shift more to one side. If the legs being in two different positions today, is not feeling good in your body, if you're feeling pain, see how it feels to come into full butterfly. So having that butterfly on both legs. And if that doesn't work, just lengthen both legs out in front of you. Really listening to what your body needs. Sometimes having the legs or any two limbs in our body in different places just doesn't feel good for any reason. So really encouraging you to take ownership of how your body's feeling and making any adjustments that you need. Always bringing yourself back to your breath.
Last breath here. Slowly start to place your left foot back on the floor and slowly begin to place your right foot back on the floor, inviting any movement here. You want to rock the knees a little bit or even just hugging the knees into the chest or taking a full body stretch before we come into our second side. And before we even come into our second side, forget what happened on the first side. Our sides need different things. So always just starting where, wherever you're at and adding or taking away as much or as little as you need. So with the feet on the floor, slowly start to cross your left ankle on top of the right knee, finding that four shape on the other side. Allowing yourself to settle into this side. You can stay right here or begin to hug your right knee in towards your chest, bringing that figure four a little closer to the belly. And again, that could mean holding onto the leg, holding onto the pants, or even sliding something underneath the foot. Always coming back to your breath. Always coming back to your inhales and your exhales.
If you're holding on with your arms, see if you can soften the shoulders and the jaw. Last breath here. Release the leg. Gently place the right foot on the floor. And gently uncross the left leg. And you'll find that half butterfly with the left leg. So the same leg we had as our four. And lengthen the right leg long. You can add a pillow or a blanket underneath either leg or both legs, really, to just fill the space. Allow yourself to settle in for a moment. And if you experience any pain or if once you feel like you should have settled in, if it's still kind of sticking around, then again, you can play with coming into full butterfly or just having the legs out long. Again, just really listening to what your body needs this afternoon.
And in your last two rounds of breath in our reclined tree. After this breath, slowly start to place your left foot on the floor. Slowly start to place your right foot on the floor. Any movement you need here just going instinctively with whatever your body is craving. And you can start to hug your knees into the chest and just allow them to drop over to the right side. So you can take any kind of twist here. You can allow the knees to stack. You can always cross the top leg over the bottom leg. Or if those are too deep for your spine today, but you still want a little bit of rotation, then I invite you to find that windshield wiper twist, which I love, it's one of my favorites. So just keeping your feet wide and let both knees knock over to one side. So again, you can add props anywhere here. I love something underneath the knee that's closest to the floor. and can just help you release into the shape a little bit more. Last breath on this side.
Allow the knees to come back to the middle. So if there were windshield wipers, your feet can stay on the floor. That you took a deeper twist, just hug the knees back to the middle and let them go over to the other side. Again, your sides need different things. So your twist is likely gonna look different from side to side, even if you're trying to take the same one. Last few moments of class, just being really intentional with your breath. Last couple breaths on this side. Nice and slow, allow the knees to come all the way back to the middle. Taking any final movements you'd like here. And start to find your way into your final Shavasana. Letting the legs fall out in front of you. Arms fall by your side. And now we've been on our back all of class two. So if you just don't wanna be on your back anymore, you're welcome to roll to one side and maybe stay in that fetal position. or you can find any other position here. Just taking a moment to check in with what your body needs these last few moments of class.
starting to bring some awareness back into the space. Starting to bring some awareness back into the body. Inviting small movements back in. Wiggling your fingers and your toes. Rolling out wrists and ankles. starting to bring yourself into a comfortable seated position. Bringing your hands into your heart center, gently bowing your head. Thanks for making, your, making it to your mat today, for your practice, for your energy, for your breath, and most importantly, for yourself. Namaste. Hi everyone, this is Z from Yonkers Public Library. Thanks so much to Sally Pinto and Alexis and Barbara from Nork. Thank you to our community partners, WJCS, the City of Yonkers Office for the Aging, Westchester County Legislator Ruth Walter, Friends of Crestwood Library, and Yonkers Public Library for making this phenomenal partnership. And we thank each and every one of you for being part of our wellness community. Be well, stay well.